Welcome aboard, sports fans. We are back from 401, bringing you red-hot coverage from the cold white north, <laughs> live on a Wednesday night. We are your hosts. I'm Timbo Slice. I'm Aaron P. And Tim has just finished off one of the most unlikely and probable games I have ever seen in my life. Don't spoil it for the uh, for the viewers there. You all can watch that, that if you want to see some, that some top quality television. dice. <laughs> um, and here we are with... Robin McNeil and Perry Lowe. This is the other semifinal match of season 11 for the Prototype Toronto League. Uh, these two players have played seven uh, league matches against seven opponents and not repained, uh, repeated a named, yes, I am stealing your hat, Devin, not repeat a named pilot or the same list of generics to this point. Um, we're going to talk to our players now, discuss their thoughts on the match and their setup thus far. Uh, first of all, uh, tell us about the list. How did you get to this point and land on these pilots for this matchup? Uh, well, as some of you may know, I flew Defenders a lot this season. Arcs only is one of my favorite formats. Um, so having been through Defenders a lot, I wanted to fly something else. You know, cut down all of the naysayers who think I can't fly anything but Defenders. Uh, and I know Perry is a very strong opponent, so I didn't want to bring just something random. So I was going to bring, uh, bring the goods. And uh, Quick Draw is one of the best Imperial pilots, as everyone knows. So I brought a really beefy Quick Draw. Uh, I was expecting him to bring, you know, super powered Soon Tier. Uh, I'd also seen this list on the table of his as he was practicing the other day, you know, trying to sneakily pretend that he wasn't practicing his list for me. Um, and Omega Leader, I brought Omega Leader because he's also flown Stealth Device Soon Tier in the past, and that guy is a bastard and Omega Leader loves shutting down bastards. All right, talk to us about your list. Why'd you pick the ships against Robin? Well, Robin's been known to fly defenders, but I had a feeling he wasn't going to bring defenders this round, and I was right. And um, no matter what he brought, I figured I needed to bring some heat. And I've been wanting to fly Fenral for a while. The rowest of Fens. The rowest of Fens. And then I thought, hey, why not give Talon Bane Cobra a shot? Uh, I love your loadouts, man. It was very good. Now, the, the viewers must know, and you must help us understand, what made you take uh, pilot skill and not either your or Omega Leader's pilot ability? At the moment, well, he's got the initiative now, but I figured based on the ability of Omega Leader, I'm not sure that it would be helpful at PS4. Okay, talk to us about where you think the first engagement's going to be. To be honest, I'm going to be kind of hanging out in my corner for quite a while just to see where Perry goes. Okay. So it's really all up to him whether he chooses to, to rush down the top of the board and turn towards me to approach on my edge or to turn left, head down the board, and go up the other side. He could also squirrel his way through the rocks, uh, at least with Fen and Thweek because they're pretty maneuverable. So I really could not guess as to where the engagement is happening, but probably it's going to be on my quadrant of the board. Okay, so... You heard it here, Travis. We can skip right to minute 35. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rob, and good luck, buddy. Where do you think the first engagement's going to be in the map? Oh, he's going to fortress. Really? He's probably going to fortress. Okay. He's talked about fortressing. All right. Well, um, um, and, and luckily you have some ships that can go fast. Do you feel that that's going to be a good way to, uh, to combat that strategy? Or? It is. It is, and it's not because I really want to engage him in the asteroids to get off the uh, debris gambit of Talon Bane Cobra. All right. And the whole idea behind a debris gambit is that, as we all know, Kyraxes are a very squishy ship, and they can go down pretty quick. So the point is loading him up token-wise, get his action, uh, add, um, experimental in the face in a debris gambit, does token load him up, um, makes him a less appealing target than one of the other ones, and hopefully they take the heat off Talon Bane Cobra for a bit. If it does not, Thweek and Fen Rao can then flank. All right, Perry. Well, listen, good luck. Have fun and, uh, and fly straight. Thank you, sir. We could do an over-under. <laughs> Gambling on stream, extremely inappropriate. <laughs> this is a family center. Right. <laughs> no, it's like Perry uh, mentioned in his pregame uh, chat there, Aaron. I mean, uh, whenever you come across an opponent that has a list that benefits from uh, spending a couple of turns trying to gain that positional and informational advantage, mm -hmm. you as the other player need to derive either um, a strategy that's going to let you either um, present approach vectors that are unpredictable or to what Perry was mentioning is that, I mean, he does have the ships that are fast enough to get down there yep. in a timely manner um, and, and cause uh, Robin some issues. I mean, this list, there's other lists in the meta right now that benefit from castling for a couple of turns to 
gain in, uh, an informational advantage. Can you uh, recommend or, or at least share some insight on why you think um, Robbins uh, got to gain from that in this game? Uh, well, if he successfully castles for a couple rounds and draws those ships of parries through the rocks, then he knows where they're going to be when they hit him. And that's, that's the most important thing. Uh, secondly, uh, he can see if he can get uh, Perry to split his fire on those ships. Um, and that will really help him. Um, so Perry's taken all one turns. Now, I must say before we get going further here, I love this build on Talonbane. Oh, the Debris Gambit? I'm in the, love with it. The Debris Gambit plus. The Ion Discharger and the Pulse Ray Shield. And the Experimental Interface. If That's you don't just... kill me, I'm going to recharge. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, the Vaxi title makes everything less expensive. So what's he spent? He spent one, two, four, five. He's got five points into Calumbane, uh, which makes him the same points as Fen. Mm -hmm. um, now, Robin ships are a little bit more out of balance in terms of points cost, and Yor also has the ability to have half health taken on him. See, the downside, what a lot of castling players forget, mm -hmm. is it's really not just the ships that you've brought to the match, which should determine whether or not you get a castle. You also have to consider the composition mm -hmm. of your squadron. So Robin has everything to lose from mm -hmm. castling here, in my opinion. I think what he should be doing is jetting and blazing the Lambda away from here because the Lambda could take half health on it. And if he could use, if he could have used the Lambda to draw Perry's aces uh, away from where he needs them to be so that he could approach them effectively with quick draw and, and, Ka and Omega Leader, I feel like he would be able to destroy one of them and even the odds. Because ultimately, Perry has an advantage, in my opinion anyway, um, as far as, you know, uh, the tools in this match. Sure, Yor has three dice. They're rarely well modded. Yep. And he hardly has any repositioning capabilities. <laughs> pithy Banta. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> what is the Pithy Banta? I want to change that person's screen name now to Pithy Banta. <laughs> <laughs> Pit Banta. All right. So we've got some interesting uh, dancing going on on Perry's side of the board. He's done two hard ones in succession with all the ships. Sure. Why don't we uh, take an opportunity to talk a little bit about um, the uh, the road that brought these two folks, uh, these two guys, to this point in the uh, prototype Toronto League uh, sure. in season eleven, Aaron? So, Jay, go go for it there, man. And we've got uh, somebody asking: Did Thweet copy PS or ability? And Thweet copied uh, Quick Draws PS. Yeah, we talked to Perry at the beginning of the game about what went through his mind, like that one, and he's just so in love with the idea of repositioning that he decided to go with that. Um, he feels that Tweak will be more effective at a nine than he would be at a four with a cool pilot ability. So we'll see if it works out for him here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's, he's uh, moving his ships around a bit. Uh, intentionally and unintentionally. <laughs> intentionally and unintentionally. It's okay. We're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna light our pitchforks just yet. No. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull up the the standings from the season eleven. We'll still talk a little bit about the players that uh, that these two players had to go through to uh, to make it to this point. So we finished the season, and Perry and um, Robin, Perry and Robin were seated uh, sixth and ninth. But then yes. we had one uh, one scrub in the top eight. He dropped. Um, who just he, he was all like, it. "I don't like 1.0 anymore." <laughs> And so that guy dropped. He kind of looks like Dave Grohl as a deep voice. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I heard that guy <laughs> once or twice. Um, so Aaron uh, decided that he would have much more fun with us behind the booth here, folks, bringing you pithy banthas in, uh, in terms of that. Um, both our players had an excellent season. Perry went 5-2 uh, and two with an MOV uh, kill rate of 486, and he had a strength of schedule of .39, which is a low strength of schedule, meaning many of his opponents... Uh, finished lower in the standings than he did. Robin, also 5-2, and two, mm -hmm. uh, with a uh, much less MOV rate. I, I, Robin had a lot of really close games yeah. Uh, yeah, throughout the season. Um, as well, you mentioned, he's a proponent of uh, defenders. He finished with the same strength of schedule as Perry, um, and then they were randomly matched up against their top eight competitors, which was... Uh, Perry versus his epic partner, Evan Cameron, yeah. in an excellent game that you can also see on VWTV Live's uh, YouTube page. And then um, 
uh, Robin was matched up against I want ben. To say ben. That's right, ben. of course. Yeah. Ben Jean from um, from Game School. Great guys in the West End there. So yeah, um, both of them had a great one. I've actually had the player uh, pleasure, I should say, of playing both of these gentlemen this uh, this season. And um, yeah, I had a great uh, great game with both of them. It was uh, it was a good one. I actually played Robin on the day that we played Epic. So if anybody in the Toronto area is ever interested in getting a an Epic X Wing game in the Prototype Toronto League, does meet at um, different gaming uh, community ha houses across the city. Aaron, why don't you tell the viewers of a couple of the spots that we'd like to throw down? So you can often find us at Sword and Board on Fridays. Uh, you can of course find us at our flag store face to face on Tuesdays. Wednesdays, we're here at 401. And in addition, uh, people play at Game Schooled in Scarborough. I'm not sure of the day. It keeps moving around. Yeah, the day moves around. It's typically on a Tuesday or a Thursday yeah. as well. Game Schooled's uh, way out of Port Union Lawrence. And so, X Planet as well. X Planet Mississauga. We try to get going on Mondays. Um, yeah, and there's uh, Harry T, North Toronto. Uh, you know, the Durham East Enders. Mm -hmm. And then west of the city, there's. Um, the GRX, and across the lake we have the Paprika Squadron. I mean, Salt Squadron. Sorry. <laughs> of course, folks, none of this tonight would be possible at all without our dear friends Victor and Travis from VWTV Live, bringing you live coverage of all kinds of uh, FFG events, namely our Prototype Toronto League, as well as all of the FFG uh, premier events from across the country. Aaron, you had the pleasure of traveling with uh, with Victor and Travis to La Belle Ville de Montréal recently. Mm -hmm. We went down to do the Alpha Condor Challenge. Now I hear there were some pretty nasty lists there that day. A couple of Jake, Ar Jake, uh, <laughs> you've seen Jake the footage. Barrels, uh, some U wings. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, there's some great stuff to watch. There were a lot of really interesting lists and players playing their hearts out. Just a lot of quality X wing, really. Well, wow. I remember we all went as a group up to that Ottawa regional, what was that, two years ago now? That was a long time ago, way back in the prehistory. of long, long time yeah, ago, we yeah, got yeah. so far away, called Ottawa. Yep, yep. I remember well, our that. Our table judge, Devin Monkhouse, originally from Ottawa, mm -hmm. apparently tells us it's actually a real place. It is. I'm not convinced, but I'll take his word for it. I was there this weekend. No. Well, that goes for next week. No wedding. Once again, folks, if you are a big fan of the work that VWTV Live and we all do, uh, don't forget to um, mosey on over to their YouTube channel, like and subscribe, uh, follow on some of their content. Uh, they also have a Facebook page, and they've recently started a Patreon uh, to, you know, sh <laughs> after much duress, honestly. It took <laughs> us a lot of tw arm twisting for them to finally... Uh, Finally, uh, get what they're doing then. Thank you, Victor. If you're interested in uh, showing your love, the uh, link is in the uh, the chat. So we've got Perry fanning out here. Yeah, Perry's fanning out, I would say, quite effectively, really. Looks like um, I mean, Thweek can one forward and then wonky barrel roll and cover the bottom lane. Talon main can go right up the middle. Yep. And uh, and the the rawest of fens, the only fen, the one true fen, except for the other fen in the rebel faction. But yeah, go on. We don't speak of him. <laughs> that little uh, that little firefly bug. Yeah, one of my favorite ships. No, it's a pretty good ship. I like it. Uh, uh, fen's looking like he's probably going to choose one of the outside flanks, or he might just go right up the middle because fen does fen things, right? Yeah. So he's coming fast with weak. Thank you, Travis, reminding everybody, don't forget as well, folks, if you do use Twitch, you can uh, like and subscribe on the Twitch and uh, use your Twitch Prime subscription, which is a essentially giving away free money. All you got to do is use your Amazon Prime to, uh, to sign up with uh, Twitch Prime as well. Now, Aaron, I got to ask, because this is definitely going to be really relevant, Perry and uh, uh, Robin are both players that have always discussed about the importance of target priority. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if we ever had a chance to talk about target priority in a dancing match, this would be the kind of one to do. Yeah. All right. So what are you thinking here? What Does does Perry go in after the shuttle? Is that the top target? That's the traditional target. Yeah, I mean, Palp's got to die. Yeah. You, you have help Palp. You're up on points right out the hop. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, like, to me... Um, Robin's going to hold that fortress for, I want to say, zero more turns. Yep. I feel if he doesn't break the formation this turn, it's too late. Hmm. I think he's got to get Omega Leader out there. Omega Leader is number two, is he not? Yep. Yeah, I mean, Omega Leader is the ship 
closest to us, folks, the one that is facing towards the downboard edge, obviously easily corrected with a one turn to its left. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenge is, of course, and Perry's obviously known and positioned himself to accomplish this, is that if Omega Leader one turns, he can't lock any of the aces. Yeah. And uh, we just suffered a small earthquake. Perhaps Mexico won another soccer game. Not entirely sure. Uh, but after Omega Leader does that turn, Thweek could four forward and then either have a boost shot or even just there have a uh, a, um, a target lock uh, glitter stem shot. You know, right. I don't know if I don't know if you're gonna waste your glitter stem from range three on it, but uh, yeah, I feel like he's got to find a way to get uh, Talon main in there. My feeling is, and I don't know if it's the right call or not, but I think Robin will jump at. Talon Bay. It's the easiest target. It's like we said, Kirox fighters have a tendency to go poof, right? Plus, this guy's actually kind of dangerous if he hangs around all game. Hmm. He's got the ability to reach in, and he can stick people with ions. It's actually not bad. Maybe we should talk about ion dischargers. It's a card I don't have a lot of experience with. Do you remember how it works? I love this loadout on any Kirox fighter. Mm -hmm. Um you know, anytime you use, you're talking about ion dischargers, right? Yep. So anytime you use this in combination with either a Kirax fighter um, or any other scum ship, this essentially introduces a pivotal moment of decision making, which can sometimes cascade down the, the, the game decision tree. Right You've on. got the ability at range one to simply recharge a shield. If you choose to recharge that shield, then you pick a ship at range one. There has to be a sh range one to resolve this. And then you, then you just don't take, because that ship is there, you essentially just don't take that electricity. And right. you give that ion token to nothing. And that ship can say, well, you know what? I don't want this to happen again. So I'm going to take that ion token that's discharged to me and break your ability to pass off the ion token. But it doesn't turn off his ability to pulse ratio. It just turns off his ability to pulse ratio for free, yeah, essentially. And uh, and as long as you can do it, like if you can get behind the... Sh like if you go in there with Talamane, you take a lump or two from the aces, and then you use that schwanky 5K on the on the, on the Kirax fighter to get behind that shuttle, you're going to be able to recharge right quick, and then you're behind the formation, and that shuttle's never going to see you again. Yep. Okay, so Robin has decided to break the castle. And he's pointed his stuff, his ships... At Thweek, except for the shuttle. Mm. I can still turn with those guys. Maybe bank with uh, Quick Draw and keep them on Talon Bane. I just absolutely love the uh, the fan here. Perry has a uh, textbook in a very short amount of period of time. Um, you know, in a very short amount of time, been able to close the gap there. Well, it looks like Fenn's in a great position to flank. Fenn is in a wonderful position for the for at least what looks like will be most of the mid game here. Looks like we got some friends from across the lake joining us in from Salt Squadron. A big hello to uh, the saltiest of sailors, Mr. Kyle Thompson, joining us live on the stream. Hey, in the Kyle, chat, how are you doing? In chat form. <laughs> He's not actually a real person. We've never seen his face. No. But uh, he's on the coast visit sometimes. All right, so what do you think, Aaron? Are you going to take a leisurely two forward from Talamane, or is he going to go right quick up forward with a four? Try and get that range two shot off. Now, uh, Talamane does move before quick draw. So he could do a four straight. Quick draw will probably do a small move um, and leave himself open. He's also got Debris Gambit. Could try using that here. But he's got to do at least a two. I think yeah. the two is the right call. I think you're right. I mean, like, I know that uh, many of the folks who are, are watching the match tonight in the chat are still debating about whether or not um, Thweek should have taken a pilot ability instead of a pilot skill. Folks, if if, if and buts were candy and nuts, then <laughs> let's uh, let, let's know. So Thweek's a PS9. He's a Star Viper. Star Vipers are cool. And uh, I actually think that you're right. The two is probably the better call here. Let's not forget as well that, I mean, Robin has the ability to castle your where he is for probably at least one more turn. Yep. Um, and then 
Yor is not going to be far enough out of that corner so that Talon Main could fit that 5K, which is pretty crutch because, you know, Talon Main rolls those extra dice at range one. At range two, he's useless. He's a Kirax fighter. Mm -hmm. He gets the range bonus at three, and he gets the extra bonus at that. So what Perry... He's facing all primaries here, so that yeah. if he could stay at range three, it would be sweet. Yeah. But I don't see how he can do that uh, if Robin won't let him. Yeah, I mean, like, if, if Perry doesn't get into range one in this shot, it's going to be tougher for him. I think that, you know, uh, Robin could definitely try and fake out uh, Perry here and red one turn left with quick draw, you know, turn two left with Omega Leader, eat that stress with Yor and see where he's at after that. Um, but it would almost be impossible for him to get arcs on more than one of Perry's ships. It's going to be really hard for him to get arcs mm -hmm. on one. So he's going to have to pick one. And it's like uh, Perry said at the beginning of the game, or Robin said at the beginning of the game, both of them have now, uh, you know, I'm sure Robin envisioned this thing as well. He imagined three aces and three lanes, and Perry envisioned, well, I can't come at him from the same lane, so I'll come at him from three directions. And now uh, we're going to see what Robin's target priority is as soon as the uh, the dials are set here, folks. Now, one thing that can happen here is even if a Mega Leader does a three turn, it doesn't look like he can toss a lock on Fen, which is great news for Perry. Eh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe a three would get him the lock. I think that's pretty close there, mate. And you know what? To your point, if... <laughs> If Perry gets three non-lockdown shots on Omega Leader, yeah. you got to take the shuttle's got to die. But if you get three shots on Ollie and you don't have, uh, and you're not locked down, you got to take that every day of the week. Yeah. Especially when you got three nines, mm -hmm. you can choose what order they shoot in. Absolutely. <laughs> Horrible. Thanks for the sweet, kind comments, folks. Very true, as you'll notice. Uh, Fine folks at VWTV Live have upped their, upgraded their dice cam. Mm -hmm. uh, at the top of the board, we have the black area, which is your brand new dice tray. All that's missing, Travis, is a great old big PTL sticker. We got to get you one of those there, man. Or perhaps even a hologram. I was thinking we should have like a PTL theme for PTL games. Maybe they'd play it for us. We could like afterwards do some beatbox, think up some lyrics, throw that together. We just sing the Canadian national anthem. Again. Suppose, suppose. Shall we, shall we, shall we give it a go? Give it a go. <laughs> wow. Okay. Look at that shuttle move. Looks like Robin doesn't like Thweek's face there, Aaron. <laughs> um, I mean, Quick Draw can very easily just one forward into the back of the shuttle here, and then take pot shots. Mega Leader gonna grab that target lock. Say Thweek. I'm going to shoot you. You're not going to shoot me. And Robin's going to judge DQ. DQ. <laughs> End of the game. And we got a three. Light your pitchforks there, boys. Damn, he's just going to B-roll right out of that arc. Might have range two there, which is no bueno. Either way, you got auto thrusters Man. off. I feel like you should probably just take a target. Yep. Mm, okay. Yep. And then he glitter stims. Might actually dodge Omega Leader's arc here, which would be ideal. Yep. Perry judging. Doesn't think he's going to be able to get out. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Perry seems certain. <laughs> one way or the other. Well, don't forget, the greens on the Star Viper are not great. Following turn, he's going to probably have to do a one bank or a two straight to get rid of this stress. Damn. So that is going to be a judge call if I've ever seen one there, Aaron. That looks like about the yep. edge of a knife. So we'll get that there in a second. We're going to see if Week is going to use all the drugs. So we just did do the two straight. It's not a bad move. Your still has to move. Your can block that 5K next turn. But we'll see what Talamain comes up with as far as action decision here. Putting the over-under out of focus. Mm. Uh, uh. He's oh, focusing. yeah. You ever watch those Oliver the Jeweler commercials, man? No. I haven't seen them. Oakville, baby. Got to love it. Fen Rao just going to be in an absolutely magic position here. Yay! Did we see the debris gambit? We are seeing one debris gambit from the experimental interface, taking an evade. No, he only got one. Yeah, it's fine by him. He's not going to be K-turning next turn. Talon made in a position to probably just clear that stress next turn and maybe even get in there and gut punch Quickdraw. Here is the big 
Big dog. Then not going to make range one from that position. Going to have to choose target priority. Yeah, I mean, Thweek's definitely in a position where he's going to get shot, undoubtedly. Uh, I don't know if Omega Leader has arc. From our angle, it looks not, but we know how wonky the angles can be, uh, you know, from the stream booth, Aaron. On the one hand, it yeah. might look that you'll clip the, clip the rock and be okay. On the other hand, you clip the rock and take two crits. You never even know. It's too tough to tell, especially on this old there it is. janky monitor we use. This janky monitor. This is a lovely monitor. <laughs> this is a great monitor. Debris gamut up there, folks. A sign and a V token for every debris cloud at range one. A favorite among janky lists on the PTL. For further information on this, go see uh, Adam Bawari in Oshawa and get wrecked by his quick draw list. Quick draw youngster with debris gambit. Oh, yeah. That's fun. Qu quick draw hopscotch in the shuttle. Four straight. Face to face with Thweek. All right, so looks like Quick draw going to get a range one on Thweek. Fully modded, too. He's probably going to take a. Uh, Probably going to take the uh, the target lock when he gets there. Devin is doing something with the templates. We'll just let Devin get to work. Devin with that absolutely majestic fedora on his head there, folks. He's, he's, he's getting a bit more creative with the facial hair as well. You it is. These days. He's, he's growing out a bit. It looks like he belongs on Game of Thrones now. <laughs> well, not quite. Not quite. Not quite there? All right. No. Fair enough. Okay, well, it looks like Robin has full-on committed to Perry's week. Um, I'm going to see in a minute just about whether or not it was worth it. Uh, Thweek is going to be able to position to pop his Glitter Stim here and enhance his uh, defensive capabilities. The question will be is wow, who Robin is he going is, to shoot? Robin is just absolutely convinced that there, Quick Draw is not going to get shot here. There's all the drugs, folks. Looks like uh, Perry's three nines are going to shoot first. Perry going to decide in which order that happens. Fenn got a target lock on the shuttle. Glitter Stim, originally from the Star Wars lore, is a combat fo um, focusing, enhancing uh, thing. Although well, those are disappointing dice. And a reroll gives him a hit wow. double crit. That is what you like to see from a target lock there, Aaron. Indeed. Oh, Fenn mean, shooting. So One evade, two shields. We got two shields off that guy. That was an impressive reroll. It was. All right, Perry's up next. He's going to shoot his Talamain Cobra, range two, same target, unobstructed. Three versus one. Mm -hmm. And we can see two and one hit the floor. One hit away. the floor, has been gobbled up by a Minoc, and it's gone. Uh, we're going to spend the focus. Spends the focus there from Talamain. Hit double crit. One die rolling from the shuttle at some point. As soon as Aaron, sorry, as soon as Robin decides to roll it. And it's another evade. It's two shields off the shuttle. Is that two for two on Aaron on uh, Robin's uh, evade rolls there? Yep, we're seeing some crazy dice out here today, folks. Oh, nothing like crazy dice from the PTL. All right, two shots from Thweek. Establishing his FCS on the shuttle. Perry forgetting no triggers. There we go. Uh, two more shields. Shields are down on the Paltmaster. One way or the other. Is either of those a crit? Nah, it doesn't look like it. Robin, considering spending the focus, I think you've taken your lumps at this point. You should probably keep that focus token error. Yep. Try to hurt that tweak. He's keeping it. And the shuttle's now on half health. That is 16 points up on the board for Perry Low. Yep. Interesting opening round. Only missed one paint. We're going to see if it pays off for him in the long run there, Aaron. So we've got Quick Draw shooting on Thweek. No rear arc shot from Quick Draw. Quick Draw shooting range one on Thweek. We're going to get full mods with expertise and a target lock. Uh, rolling, that was the first one. We're going to get a target lock in the, the blank. And expertise for four. And it's four. So one damage going through for sure. Let's see what Thweek's glitter stem was worth it. Uh, Yeah. It was. It's taking two. two. Shield, no crit. Always a good start when there's no crits. And now the question will be resolved. Does okay, so Mega Leader have arc? Devin going to have to step in there and make a, a judgment call. No, it looks, it looks, pretty, like it it looks pretty apparent. Oh, no. Here comes Devin. So we're going to get him to hold down the uh, the Omega Leader there. 
As I mentioned before in the previous game, folks, people may seem kind of slow and awkward at this, but the fact of the matter is that's a very wide table they're squeezing around. So thank you for your patience and understanding. Usually when we play the PTL games, Aaron, uh, you know, during the season when, when you're going about and you're playing your seven matches, it's easy to say without a doubt they are the most casual, fun, relaxed environments. Mm -hmm. It's only when there's cameras involved that we all like to get a bit strict and have some fun, just making yeah. sure that we've got accuracy and efficiency. Yeah. Um, we are going to find out the judge has ruled it as in our. Looks like it. And We're going to palp a crit. Palping a crit in for a mega leader. Mega leader rolling range two. Hit crit from Thweek. Yeah. See if that glitter stem is worth its two points there, Aaron. Looks like it's not. One crit going through. And it is a crit. That's disappointing. You got Thweek taking a crit now, which is uh, one too many damage there. Juke. Ah, uh, yes, of effect. course. Wouldn't Glitterston work then? He's locked. Of course. So Omega Leader has the lock and Juke. Okay, so you're going to shoot range two. He Folks gets two. modding for two. And Glitter Stim for two. saves his bacon. So the answer to that question, Aaron, was a resounding yes. Glitter Stim worth its two points. Absolutely. I don't see this working out extraordinarily well for Perry this turn, i got to tell you. Uh, both these ships are going to be able to pull off a 4K and let your just nom, 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 munch that stress down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're able to take up to two stress tokens before he can't take any more. Yep. And he's free and clear as he stands, so he could, in fact, stall, and the other two could K, and it would all fit. Now, did you have the pleasure of playing either of these players this week, this uh, this season? I did not. I uh, played Perry a fair amount, just casually. Uh, it's really interesting, actually. He is, as you mentioned, recently come from SoCal, where he was part of a scene down there. And he's got an interestingly different uh, flight style. It's interesting when you have someone outside your meta come and play in it. You can watch and observe how they do things differently. And well, we, go, sorry, on. go ahead. No, no, please continue. Uh, and it's been interesting playing against Perry because uh, he does do some really interesting things. He, he does like this fanning out and this joke. So I well, I can tell you that we had an absolutely thumper of a season, the swan song to 1.0. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody playing all of their favorite 1.0 stuff as much as they could before this thing goes bye-bye. Mm -hmm. We had over 23 players uh, finish four games or more, which is going to qualify them for all of the awesome participation prizes in the PTL. We had an additional 10 or so players play at least one or two matches. So we had... Uh, uh, 13 players do all seven. Nice. So we had a great completion rate this season on our uh, thing. And, you know, next on our big calendar, obviously, you've got season 12 in the future. But, you know, for all of our uh, viewers in and around the area of Toronto or if you're further away, wanted to give them a big uh, save the date for either uh, September or October area. We're going to be announcing the date any week now about the PTL Open 2018. Yeah. Yeah. We are very excited since it will be 2.0. It baby. is confirmed that the PTL Open of this year will be a 2.0 event. Still trying to work out uh, which weekend specifically we're going to throw it on. We're down to a short list of three. We're just going to make sure that the venues can accommodate, uh, sorry, accommodate the ones we want, and then we're going to announce it. But, yeah, yep. we're going to have main event going to be 2.0. It's going to be a two-day event this year, mm -hmm. and we're going to be doing uh, tons of prizes. Oh, my gosh, do we have all the prizes and we also have uh, a couple of alternate formats going to be doing on that day. We've got some Mario Kart going up and like that. And mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be running it a little bit differently than we run last year. But we had a great time last year. We had the largest. It was awesome. Yeah, wasn't it the largest non-FFG run event? In Canada in until Canada that point? Today? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So big thanks to everybody who made it a big success last year. Hope to see you again this year. It was great. Yeah, it was won by Tristan Singleton. Oh, the dirty Sanchez. He did. Tristan Singleton, of course... One of the members of the GRX out in the West who came down to Orges with us over the weekend. Shout out to those guys. They are some committed and strong players. I mean, yeah, committed, sure, but most of us just wanted to have a great road trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what road trip with the boys? Uh, diggity down. Let's do this. <laughs> there will be uh, likely a uh, convoy, caravan, uh, Tasmanian devil like moving cloud of shenanigans mm -hmm. 
in the form of some BTL and GRX and possibly Salt Squadron members uh, moseying our ways down to PAX Unplugged at the end of the year as well, Aaron. When's that happening, Tim? It's actually going to happen uh, near the end of the year. And what I'm actually thinking for this one, we've, we haven't tried this yet, but I've tried so many times and asking you nicely to come on road trips with us. <laughs> what I figured we're going to just we're just going to show up at your house and chloroform Kidnap you. Yeah. yeah, we're going to black bag it, just like old school. If you tell anybody about this, I'll kill you. I'm yeah. just kidding. We'll have him back by six. It's all good. <laughs> so we're going to show up and we're going to take Aaron and we're going to go to Philadelphia and you should come. Pack some plug in Philadelphia again this year. Maybe it is. Maybe. Yeah. Um, it'll be the first 2.0 system open as well. Awesome. Yeah, we were bringing back some really exciting information uh, from the weekend, uh, having talked to um, uh, Cascade Games about what their plans for the 2019 track are. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, like we, we talked a little bit about um, just the tireless work that those poor guys do, hauling their gear by land all over the U.S. to these pop-up system opens as well as the um the the system opens housed within conventions they're 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 you know it's a lot of work it's a few days long complicated some of it can be quite tireless and sorry mm -hmm. thankless at the end of it um you know the the destiny and the l5r and the armada and the x-wing it's a lot to do in one weekend and steve and his guys have been uh great at doing it uh flying all over the country and, and getting these events and he actually tried tirelessly this year to, to get a system open in canada we were going to thinking about uh doing one in toronto and you know a lot of it was on track, and then 2.0 got announced. And yeah. A lot of that kind of changed what people's turnout rates were going to be to certain events. No doubt. So, yeah. Um, one of the things that Cascade Game says uh, wanted to make clear to everybody north of the border is that um, they're going to do everything in their power to uh, bring two system opens in the 19 track to Canada. Uh, they're hoping to do one on the West Coast, and they're hoping to do one in Toronto. There's a lot of logistical challenges that go along with bringing staff over the border or, yeah. or hiring local staff. So there's well, definitely some boxes. Two system opens in Canada would be just would leave us pretty elated. I mean, we've we've watched jealously as many happen in the United States, and uh, we'd be thrilled to have two here. There are a lot of enthusiastic people who just don't want to make trips that long. So it would be I great. I think he would fly strikers. <laughs> now, uh, Devin is doing some positioning of ships, and we have a question of whether or not the shuttle will get past Quick Draw. My God, that hat is just so fantastic. <laughs> I want to make a hammock out of it and just curl up for a nap in it. It does make me want to sleep somewhere bucolic, that hat does. It kind of makes me want to sing a Jack Johnson song. You know, banana pancakes? You want to do? No, no, go ahead and give us a sample. No, I'm not singing on the air. <laughs> you got to get some beers and a karaoke machine in front of me before that happens. All right, so it looks like your has not cleared, which I think is just fine by him. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what we were trying to accomplish with the one bank. I feel like a one forward would have been quicker. Yep. But you know what? Um, the clock can sometimes be your, your enemy in these things. Mm -hmm. Perry is already up on points, and unless... I've missed my mark. I think Yor is likely going to die this turn. I mean, Fen can two straight, Talamain can two straight, and then Yor's taking ten dice before he shoots. So we'll, we'll see um, if that uh, two straight from Fen will fit. I'm I'm not sure. Very surprised to see the one turn here. I thought for sure we would just see double four K uh, from both of these. We might just see a one turn three sloop here from Quick Draw. Yeah, this is a good move on Robin's part. This will block just about anything that Thweek tries to do to get away. Yeah, just a clarification, Fenrau does not have a one bank on his dial. He does Ooh. have a boost. But he's fast. He's uh, he's like the um, interceptors. His greens are twos. Yeah. So he's got a two straight, two bank, or two turn. Two turn will get him out of arc. Two bank might bump. I'm willing to call it two straight. Yeah. And just taking a focus with a mega leader. Yep. Talamain Cobra up next, getting a one bank, which is green. Kirak's going to clear that. Wow, he's going to get right up in there. Yeah, so we got no uh, no problem here. Devin wants to get in there and do that. That's going to get mighty close. Yep. So we're going to like a glove. That's sweet. That's so sweet. Talamain maintaining arc range one there. Going to be able to... Uh, ion Discharger and 
uh, pulse race shield at the end of this turn. Looks like he's going to focus and take a experimental interface debris gambit evade token there. Yeah. Thweak experimental interface won't allow him to take target lock focus, which is what he'd love in this it situation. Is, yeah. It's not push the limit. No. It's the it's the push the limit design for um, guys without EPT slots. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah, it's like here's a way to do it, but you you can't all, you have to waste your EPT slot on something else. Yeah. Devin is demanding that one bank piece, and we have here we go. Week is gonna okay. He tried to bank away, so that was a really good call on Perry's part. Oh no, he banked in. Mm. This I offered to judge, but Devin was like, "No, nah, I'll do it." This is definitely giving him a lot of work. Well, for more uh, wonderful examples of uh, Devin's parking skills, you can check out the <laughs> other video that was on the BWTV live stream tonight. Uh, they, of course, have an archive. Travis helped me out here going back three years on their YouTube channel. Videos from their original stuff. I'm just going to make my voice keep going higher until Travis answers <laughs> me. We were just wondering how far back the VTTV live archive goes. How far are we going back these days? Forever. Ever. Forever. The Donna time. All the videos ever. Are All there. the ones that ever were. <laughs> but, but my dice. <laughs> but his dice. <laughs> okay, folks, so we've got a little bit of a Union Station at 5 o'clock thing going on here. It looks like Tweak will get one last shot in. Quick draw doing the sloop. Going to have to clear out Omega Leader and possibly Tweak. Ben uh, looking like he's going to be doing SFA. He did two turn. Well, he can shoot quick draw if he wants to. I don't know if he's going to have arc there. Oh, you he? might be right. Not to mention if he shoots quick draw, then he's going to uh, trigger quick draw's ability to take a bonus attack. Yep. Okay, so we're going to get the one out of there. We're going to get the one bank out of there. Hashtag but teamwork. But whatever happens here, Thweek and Talon Bane will take shots on that shuttle. Yeah, I think it's extremely unlikely yours making it out of this thing alive. He's got no token to mod, and, and Talon Bane's got five dice with a focus. Thweek's yeah. got nothing to mod, but he's but still rolling one. four oh, dice. He's got a target right? lock from last That's round. That's true. He's still got the target lock. So Okay, we're going to mark the back of Thweek. Make sure we can get him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Devin just savagely bumping the dice tray out of alignment, causing extra work for our hardworking producers. This would this will be the last straw, Aaron. We'll never see Devin judge again. No. There may well be painful wedgies in his future or something. That's how severe this infraction is. Hmm. Interesting. So we got range three from Fen to. Quick drop. Perry going to have to make one of the classic game time decisions that are involved when you fight a quick draw. Aaron, shooter now or shooter later? Would you describe the look on the face of the first person that you said, no, I'm not going to shoot this turn? <laughs> uh, on their face? Yeah. When I was flying quick draw? Yeah. No, sorry. Like when you they were flying quick draw and you were there and their quick draw is pointed at you and you look at their quick draw and you're just like, no, I'm not going to shoot this turn. Well, you have to shoot her, though. You gotta, you gotta start getting to work. But yes, people do that, and are terrified. It's the same thing with Dengar, right? People were used to not shooting back on Dengar. It is true. Another card I will not miss from 1.0. Yeah. Well, he's coming back, of course. Yeah, Different. but the revenge shot's harder to pull off, at least this turn. Yeah. A lot harder. And the punishing one title, I actually have a copy of it right here. <clears throat> nice. 2.0 punishing one title reads: While you perform a primary attack in. The if the defender is in your primary arc, roll one additional attack die. So you don't get the punishing one title in 360. Remove a crew slot, add an, an astromech slot. So interesting. Okay, getting back to the action here, we got the combat phase coming up after just like a seven car pileup on the 401 mm -hmm. East towards Montreal. And I think it was exactly what Robin wanted. Yeah, I mean, like he bumped Thweek with Omega Leader. 
so I don't think it's perfect mm -hmm. because now he's only getting one gun on Thweek. I mean, it is a gun that could theoretically uh, end Thweek's day, but if you're trading Palp for one of your ships, it's not the worst of the idea. So we got Thweek three hits coming three. through. Target lock into Nada. Robin going for three out of four evades on that shuttle he's rolled so far. He was hoping that uh, that would suffice to do the shuttle. And Robin rolls yet another evade. Oh, you don't need that? Any of those crits? Nope. So we got two hull left on the shuttle. All up to Talon Main to decide whether or not he wants to actually end yours day here. Robin probably going to spend Palp. Yeah, so he needs to use Talon Bane to do this. Talon Bane going to have to do five dice. He needs to get no good dice here. Mods. Okay, so we got... That's pretty hot. Yeah. Three and a crit. Focusing up for three and a crit. That'll do it for the shuttle. Yep. Yeah, he rolls an evade just to show that he can. That's four out of five evades. <laughs> it's four out of five that. evades. Ugh. I played the man. He's, he's one of them lucky, lucky types. But can he roll two crits on a debris cloud? In a row? I don't know. I mean, that's, In that's a row. some serious dice luck. Oh, but my dice! <laughs> Your dice, man. Your dice. All right, we got a Mega Leader. Who's the Mega Leader shooting? Fen? Mega Leader has a target lock on the poor bugger he's bumped into. So yeah. whoever he's shooting uh, is going to hit it. So Fen does have arc on Omega Leader. Fen probably going to take it. Unless they've forgotten. Nope. Rage one. In arc, in arc. Right. So Concord down applies. Which will be handy for when Omega Leader shoots back. If he does, in fact, shoot Fen, I'm sure he's going to shoot Talon Man. But here comes Perry. Rolling hot fire. That is three Whoa. crits and two hits here. Omega Leader being a sad panda. Needs three paint here to only take his shield. Rolling the stealth device. Oh, yeah. Stealth device. So, just in case you missed it, folks, that's three hits and, sorry, three crits and two hits. Natty. So we got some damage going through here. Yep. Mega just Leader one, losing though. his shield and his a, uh, stealth device. Yeah. So, that was pretty lucky for Robin. I mean, yeah, it was insanely very, lucky. Very, very lucky for Perry. But Rolled three out of uh, three out of four <laughs> Natty of AIDS. It's pretty amazing. Somebody, somebody float those dice in salt water there, Aaron. Where's Alan Fung when you need him? Yeah. Uh, Alan, can you pick up these dice and roll them a thousand times? Thank you. Just tell me the results. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stream uh, lighten up a little bit. We did get some hot dice from both sides. Hot dice. It has been hot dice all night long here at 401 Games in downtown Toronto, Aaron. As it normally is, 401 Games, of course, one of the many places the PTL meets. Okay, we've got uh, Quick Draw rolling his expertise Three FCS shot on Thweek. So unless Thweek is magic, he's done. Yep, Thweek takes two and perishes. It crit. Pop. Omega Leader still having a range one shot on Talamane or Ben Rao. Mm -hmm. Neither of which locked down. Going to be able to spend defensive tokens. Yeah, it's three dice. Robin going to decide who he's shooting at in just one quick second. Mm. I think it's fairly obvious you go for. Yeah, I mean you definitely want to go for TB there. Um, Fen's going to laugh at you maniacally. <laughs> yeah, holding on to that focus like that. Sitting there like a salty Mandalorian. Uh, so two. Rolling three on Talonbane. Talonbane rolls one, take one. Spends the evade, takes nothing. Oh, he had the EI. The uh, he had the, from the EI debris from the debris gambit. gambit. Yeah. Okay, so Sad Panda, no no damage on the other two aces uh, from Robin. Hmm. Robin losing a shield and the stealth device on a Mega Leader, that was a key loss, right. I feel, for uh, for Perry here. It really got him back in this game because Robin had a, an initial advantage with the whole positional uh, points for saying and obviously Palp, but... For Perry to be able to not have only traded, he had to trade one of his ships for Palp. That's usually how that's going to go down. But for him to have traded Palp for one of his ships as well as Omega Leader Stealth Device, I feel was a really good trade yeah. uh, in that exchange there. Aaron, what are, your, what are your insights on how one went down? I'd agree. A little lead for Perry, that's nice. Now, I'm, I'm not crazy about Talon Bane's position here. No, it could be better. But on the other hand, Omega Leader's position isn't great either. 
Yeah, what does Ollie do? Is he two sloop left? Don't think that'll fit. And, you know, doing that without any tokens, that would be bad news. Yeah, uh, I mean, he can, he can one turn right and try and block Fen's two bank. One turn but right, yeah. I don't see many places where Fen can go where he's not taking a range one shot from quick draw that involves expertise and possibly a target lock. Yeah. I mean, Fen can usually take shots, but it's better if he gets up at that range one and he has a focus token at least. And this is push. This is sad, uh, Fen. This is push the limit, Fen. Yeah. But he did not take a stress token previous match, or sorry, previous round, I should say. Yes, so, so he's he clear to do what he wants. Could do the three bank. The three, three bank? The three bank right. My money says that fits. Yeah, I would not gamble on that. I mean, I would not take the that that side of the bet. No, if you like, if you three bank right with Fen, you barrel roll ship left up board, and push to focus. Then following turn, your two turn comes down here, and you're right where Quick Draw is. Yeah, I think the three bank with Fen will put him in the debris. The debris. The debris. Hmm. What are our players going to do? And more importantly, is Perry going to remember to take his tweak token back from Robin? That that could be a tragic mistake. Now I left three of my cards with uh, Steven last after last game, so I have to remember to get those back. That's okay. Just a reminder to uh, anybody who ever borrows cards from the PTL, we do break thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy to lend cards out at one of the many places across Toronto uh, where our league likes to meet. Aaron, you want to remind the viewers where we uh, where we like to meet up? Uh, I think we did that already, man. We sure did. Uh, we're here at 401 Games on Wednesday. And you can come on down and check it out. Tuesdays face-to-face. And we're looking at Friday's Sword and Board and Game School, different days of the night. And also X-Planet. We forgot to mention X-Planet. You, still, do, you still doing uh, Monday nights at X-Planet? Monday, Monday nights have been tough the last few weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, typically Jeff Assiri and I run that boat, and um, Jeff's in the process of becoming a father. Oh, well, good for him. The effect Congrats. part of it, not the cause part of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um, you know X-Planet is definitely something you want to kick up and of course folks if you're listening and you're over the age of 19 illegal, uh, illegal drinking age we do meet for Beer Wing in the uh, the, ju- the junction at um, Seascape on occasion which is moved oh it moved yeah I am amazed where did it move to down the street oh okay so same area Fair yeah enough. Fair I haven't been enough. there to check it out, and I don't know the exact the new address, but that's the deal. They must have needed more space for the robots versus wrestlers that they do in their basement sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for their events of various kinds. Okay, so Palp went poof. Perry's dials are set, and Robin is meticulously contemplating all aspects of his existence metaphysically in the universe right now. Looks like he's got quick draw, quick draws dialed down. So it's all about a mega leader here. I mean, it's not an easy answer to any question is where is Omega Leader going to go? I think you were right the first time, just hard one, right? Did you say that? I did say that at one point, but I do say a lot of things, so. Mm-hmm. Well, he's got to get working on that lock. He's got to build his token stack back up. Yeah, all, all he's not too useful, but he's got no tokens. Yeah. And, you know, if you have to choose between a focus evade or a target lock, uh, which do you choose? A target lock, I think, to start. I mean, especially in this situation where he's got no chance of having uh, uh, Talonbane come back on him. Maybe Fen, but it won't be a quality shot. Well, I mean, Robin's in a, uh, Robin's got all the advantage here, if you if you ask me, right? We got we got a tie game, twenty five minutes left. Mm-hmm. Um, all that needs to happen is one player lose one ship, and 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 it's over. It's over. So if. Uh, Robin can snipe the Kirax fighter, or Perry can finish off Omega Leader. Then either of them win. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot easier to do for Robin. It's easier to kill a Kirax fighter than it is to kill Omega Leader or Quick Drop. Definitely Quick Drop. Shockingly enough, going for a two sloop. Now I said this wouldn't fit. And Actually, this is a two bank, two bank left. Apologies, yeah. not a sloop. You're convinced it doesn't fit. Yep. We're going to find out right now from we will. our judge, which is a 35-year-old Jason Moraz with his fedora. Damn. You were right, Tim. 
imaginary points to you. Welcome to X-Wing at 401 Games, where the ships are made up and the points don't matter. <laughs> All right, so he's in a good position here. Yeah, I mean, it could be worse. So he goes with the evade token. Okay, so Talamain taking the one bank, as originally expected, not a terrible spot to be. Might actually set up Robin for what we like to call the dream, which is the range one in both arc shots of quick draw. Mm -hmm. uh, Talamain going to have to decide whether or not he is going to go for a block or whether or not he is going to try and actually... Yeah, very confident move there on Perry's part. Yeah, definitely ready to take a barrel roll. Uh, not a terrible idea. The Kirax fighters sporting 2K turns. Remind me, Aaron, a 5 and a 4 or a 5 and a 3? Uh, 5 and I think it's a 3. Can't be sure, though. Okay. We're going to find out mm -hmm. probably in a turn or two, so we'll, we'll, we'll know just then. So I would not take the second action there. I think, no, nope, he's going to. Debris Gambit for an evade. Worry that Robin's going to hopscotch. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. This is interesting, see, because if, if Perry has called this properly, then he's done it brilliantly. Because what he's done is he's blocked the intervening space between yep. Talonbane and Fenn so that Quick draw would bump Talon Bane and have to go toe to toe with Fenn. The question or not is whether or not Robin saw this coming and sloop to his left. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Report from the table. Here we go. He could be being facetious. We'll find out shortly. Okay, so Fenn taking target lock and focus. He's Fenn, all in, baby. Oh, I mean, Fenn Rao, probably one of the easiest pieces in the world. Uh, to tank two range one shots from Quick Draw. Ooh. Quick Draw going it. to be able to mod the first shot with expertise and the second shot with target lock expertise. But then again, Quick Draw might just lose all his uh, her shields here. Yeah, I mean this was about the best that Perry could do, and I mean props to him. This is this is some nice positioning. This really gives him the opportunity to flip things the other way before he starts to lose too much of Talon Bane. Question from the chat this evening about whether or not our judge who wears the fedora like Jason Mraz sings like Jason Mraz. Uh, no, he sings better, is the answer. <laughs> Here we got him. Uh, we five, got five dice. Five coming dice coming from, from Perry with initiative. Oh. All the crits. Yeah. And the target locked one. Does he spend the focus? Does he keep it? Perry deciding about whether or not he's going to put the focus and try and get some crits into Quick Draw. Quick Draw with no defensive tokens at all. Yeah. Could very well lose his shit and eat a crit. He's playing cautious. He's playing cautious. I mean, it's not a bad idea. He's about to take two shots from. He will, yeah. Thing. First I mean, one unmodded, second one with target lock. Part of me wanted to be like Palpatine here and do it. But yes. No. Um, it is the cautious move. What do we have here? We have two evades. Wow. So Quick Draw losing two shields. Robin continuing to roll evades like it's his job. Yep. All right, so we've got the retaliation shot coming first. Then we got expertise for three. Oh, three. Yep, you're right. Fenn gonna roll four dice at range one with the title. Yep. What do we got? Two of aids plus the free one. Nothing. Yep. Nothing at all. SFA from the first shot there, and then whether or not Robin remembers or not. Concord Dawn title procking there. Robin going to have to remember. Yep, here comes a regular shot. Mm -hmm. Just a quick question on whether or not Robin was going to remember that one. Going to spend that target lock, try and reroll those blanks. See if he can get forward. No, just two. And to Fen, that's almost completely irrelevant. Fen Rao laughing maniacally, wondering why, oh, why did I not spend my focus token? Yeah, he's fine. It was close, though. It was close. Had Robin rolled better, he would have got hit. Okay, so as we know, in a game with Quick Draw, every shield that he has, is, as long as he has shields, is essentially like having another ship in you. Yep. Okay, so here we are after about three rounds of combat. We got 20 minutes left. Mm -hmm. um, wow, we only have 20 minutes left. Yeah, I know. Where'd that time go? Um, I think that, uh, re that round with all the positioning, the guy with the hat showed up. Oh, the cluster duck? Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. Now, I think if I'm Perry here, I'm thinking disengage, take my time, risk the final salvo. Unfortunately, both of Perry's ships are stressed. 
So mm -hmm. quick draw going to be able to do just a leisurely one bank left or even a, a three straight forward and get rear arc shots on uh, one or both of Perry's ships here. I mean, Talon Bane could one bank left debris gambit and possibly get two evade tokens from these two rocks here. Good point. Uh, he would only, of course, be able to spend one of them because of the FAQ clarification. Uh, I've got the PTL target locks. Oh, I see. Spelling it all out on stream, reminding folks that uh, best spot to find X-Wing in and around the uh, Southern Ontario area is, in fact, Toronto. <laughs> so I, I'd say if I were quick try, I wouldn't bother with uh, the back arc shots. They're not very good. They're probably not going to do much damage to these guys, if any at all. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Robin's probably just going to fight the clock and go for the kill shot on on uh, Talon Bay with no time left. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got Fen locked, but it's not great. Yeah, it's a very good point. If, uh, if Quick Draw sloops, he loses his expertise as well, yep. so two modded dice being better than you know three dice only partly modded. But then he's behind them. Mega Leader very far out of position. Decided to go with a evade token first. Mm -hmm. and this is still anybody's game. And yeah. it may come to a final salvo if they play at the rate they've been playing. <laughs> Which is positively Glacier at some points, but mm -hmm. it's all right. Sometimes the next wing, you got to think twice. You do, absolutely. People complain about other people taking too much time, but you got to think about your moves and your actions. You got to take that time. Yeah, what you do, uh, what you spend fretting, you'll lose in the long run if you just make snap choices. Absolutely. You know, like oh, it's just a debris cloud, no problem. I'll just fly over that. <laughs> and I can't possibly get another. Crit. No, I mean like I've rolled, I've rolled all the crits I could possibly roll in one game. <laughs> well, On yourself. You <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got a one turn from Omega Leader. Uh, looks like he's going to charge up his target lock. Yep. Probably locking Fen. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Fen definitely being the uh, the biggest danger here for um, for Omega Leader. If Perry can finish off Quick Draw, then he's got this game. I mean, Quick Draw is a lot easier and a lot squishier than, uh, than Omega Leader. All right, so we got a two straight coming from the Kirax fighter. I think it's a two bank, which is green, I believe. 3 a.m. over in the U.K. Not exactly sure why you're still awake watching us at 3 a.m., but we love you anyway for doing it. Uh, tries for the debris gambit. Looks good to me. Hmm. Gets the one of aid token. Probably going to be enough to satisfy that uh, rear arc shot from quick draw. Mm-hmm. Fen going to do the two turn, probably boost and power himself up for coming up and going toe to toe with Quick Draw on the following turn. We will probably get about three turns more before this game is over there, Aaron. Yep. And if Fen can keep himself behind Omega Leader, just chase him from behind, then he's in pretty good shape. Mm. God, I love me some push the limit, Fen. Yeah. Oh, only, yeah. Only thing I love more is an Atani Fen. Eileen PTL fan myself, but soon, soon, in 2.0, we'll won't even need PTL. No, everybody gets PTL. You get red actions linked together. And then it'll be fearless fan or outmaneuver fan. I like what they did. They took all the s ness 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 out of the words. Like it's no longer fearless ness 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 ness. It's just fearless. Yeah, I always wondered what was going on with that extra syllable addiction thing they had. I'm sure it makes it a lot easier to translate the cards into other languages. Mm -hmm. Considering how apt English is, yeah, and we have these crazy words in our language like "live" and "live," which mm -hmm. are spelt the same way, pronounced slightly different, <laughs> and mean two completely different things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Billy. English, as languages go, it's the dog's breakfast. Yeah, I prefer Klingon. Yeah, personally, but never learned to speak that. No. Uh, despite, <laughs> despite you know that. Uh, should have inherited. It's three just bank. a three bank. Are they both going to just go for the final salvo? What the heck? 
I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that either of these players have final salvo. Perry less so by choice. Mm -hmm. But honestly, Robin did need to uh, get out of there and recharge his uh, Omega Leaders tokens mm -hmm. and, and, and come about. I mean, Fen Rao is an incredibly dangerous knife pit fighter. If you spend too much time uh, in close quarters with him, you're going to regret it. Yeah. So as Master points out, four versus six dice is pretty terrible odds for Robin. Yeah, it is terrible odds. It. Yeah, for yeah. sure. On the final salvo. Uh, quick draw is going to take a back arc shot at a tokenless Fen. If only the final salvo were green dice, I would say Robin has the <laughs> advantage, but it's not. So we got one crit. Let's spend the lock. To, we got hit crit. So he's so shooting at Fen then. Yeah, okay, so it's range for Fen. two. And he gets the two of AIDS. Last Maddies. maniacally. The rowest of all Fens, the Fen Rao, the original foul, mm -hmm. the OG Fen Rao, laughing it off. Fen Rao belongs in a fighter jet, not a bloody ladybug with a little rear arc thing going on there. The Shethapi. <laughs> what is that? No, I get it. Rebel Fen. Yeah. Star Wars Rebel Show, good one. Check it out. Hmm. I'm wondering if it's Master Rasta, 1996, from the UK. Could it yep. possibly be the infamous Master Rasta, the one and only? That'd be my guess. Master I mean, would Rasta. somebody else take his name on him? It wouldn't be the first time. I actually went on sometime on the Twitch, and there was somebody with the name uh, Jeremy is the best Howard, and it wasn't Jeremy or Duncan Howard. Yeah. So, go figure. So if I see a T. Ralphs on a chat, I should question that? It's not me. <laughs> Master says I'm from Germany, not the UK. So totally different dude. Well, that's okay. We love all shapes and sizes here in Canada. Canada. The land of the Canada. The land of legal cannabis as of yesterday. Woo! -hoo. Interesting. I know some people are thrilled about that. Like our new premier. Anyway, we're getting off topic here. <laughs> Imperial dials down. Fen Rao deciding how he's going to come about this. Doesn't want to chase Quick Draw too aggressively. Let's not forget, folks, that although Quick Draw only gets those two uh, dice out that rear arc, being at range two makes Fen Rao a sad panda. Indeed. He doesn't like range two, uh, doesn't like being there, doesn't want any of that because he gets none of his tricks, none of his uh, defensive mods. And Quick Draw has that nasty one forward on the Thai SF dial, so it's easy for him to range chain uh, those two dice and just put those fully modded two dice through. Fen Rao Kid touched his dun 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 Just lively on the chat this afternoon. Indeed. Loving all of the love that you folks are sending our way. We love casting you. Uh, we love bringing you exciting PTL matches from our wonky league as well as premier ffg events but none of it it would be could be possible without the tireless efforts of victor and travis from vwtv live so don't forget to run all over to their youtube page like subscribe share their facebook visit their patreon yeah let them know they got uh they got their patreon up and running now and they're they're happy to uh take donations drop them a donation money or blood either one no not blood just kidding. no not blood I mean, give the blood to the, f the blood bank. <laughs> <laughs> Travis does accept hugs. It's true, though. I've, I've never even tried to hug I, him. I pay my Patreon dues in hugs. Really? With, with, with Travis. They're, they're soft yet firm <laughs> at the same time. So we've got a... <laughs> well, there we go. We've got Omega Leader doing the sloop, which I think was a really good choice. I mean, why, yeah. Mega Leader's got the lockdown on Fen, which means he's going to get the extra dice. I think the best move for Fen, yes, yep. is to diss the heck engage. Fen has to spend time and give Talonbane enough chance to get back in the fight. Talonbane can be the linchpin here. He has no answer for it because you have two people that shoot five dice at range one. You mm -hmm. can't lock them both. Right. Both of them want to gut punch you. Yeah. You have to find a way to stay out of both of their uh, their ways. Now, Talon Plus, Bane, this Talon Bane is fly. Debris Gambit, Experimental Interface, Ion Discharger. He's recharged now. He did it two turns ago. We know that he's back to full strength. I mean, um, he is the flyest Talon Bane ever was. I'm really enjoying the build. The EI Debris Gambit is uh, another example of a fun, unique flair that Perry has put on a few yep. of his lists this season. Got the sloop coming from Quick Draw. Robin yep. ready to do, 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 charge. So that right was a at. 
great call on Perry's part, anticipating that stuff, the disengage. Because now, and disengaging, so now Perry is just threatening, hey, man, I'm just going to fly around in circles. Well, I mean, Fen can two, Fen can one turn, focus, right, taking all the thing he needs to, and that would give uh, Talon Bane enough time to get back into the fight, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, if I'm Perry, though, I don't even want to take range three shots from Omega Leader. He's got Juke. He's got a lock on Fen. It is true. It is true. Hmm. Now, Omega Leader can two-turn to the north. Yeah, I mean, Omega Leader's got, what, two turns that are green, two banks that are green. Yeah. Two straight, three straight. I don't think Talon Main's going to get a shot this turn, but he will definitely be in a position to follow up and probably get to shoot the last or second last round of the game. Well, I think you're right. We, mm -hmm. we see a nice fast move from uh, TB, TBC. Get him coming in fast. TB to the CEO. <laughs> I love Talon Main. There's um, Scott Ross out from London, and his son came mm -hmm. in for a GNK. I believe they're also in the uh, the TV archives at one point. Yeah, yeah. Um, where Sam Ross brought three Kiraxes. It was Victor Hell, Talon Main Cobra, and Gestero, the three of them. And they all had Ion Pulse uh, dischargers and shields and all that fun stuff. I think we cast that sucker together. Did we? Yeah. Oh. Memories. Nostalgia 5. Nostalgia 5. All right. So it looks like Fen either disengages wholly here or he eats some shots from Mega Leader. It's only a two straight from Talon Bane. What is Perry playing at? Fen Rao in a position of one turn. Take a focus target lock on quick draw. Finish that other shield off while he's at range three, and he's got auto thrusters with the focus token. Zoom in there and gut punch him the following turn. Well, that's what he's doing. Perry realizing he's got probably just enough time to do that. Uh, all right. Does he barrel roll back mm, and get himself more dice? I, I thought he was going to be a little bit further. Yep. Yeah. Good call, good call. Yeah. Playing it defensive, push for that there. Well, focus. I mean, if he had stuck there and taken his shots, then he's he's in a really terrible position for the following turn with that two bank, probably not getting mm -hmm. past that debris cloud in the two turn, getting too far past the debris cloud. So, oh wow, there's not going to be a shot for quick draw here. Perry Did really, Perry? Perry really does not want Omega Leader to have range here because yeah. it might be range three obstructed, but Omega Leader's got Jute charged yep. up. And it could still go pretty badly. Yeah. So this is um, two versus five. Well, this is Fen shooting first. Of oh, course. Fen shooting first. That's right. Yeah. Perry rolling. Trip blanks. Rolling. <laughs> Trip blanks. <laughs> Wowzers. That's fine. He just needs to survive here. <laughs> and I feel oh, your pain, Barry. Oh, 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 we do have range. Oh, 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 maybe, maybe. Look hey, at that. Put your finger on the back of the old top, terrible the range ruler. Get that thing out of here. We'll have to give him a new uh, range roller at the PTL Open later this season there, Aaron. Yes. Register mm. early. Well, wait for us to get the damn site up and everything going. Devin going to judge that out of range. The range ruler does fit between the two pieces. Yeah, I can't see what's going on there. Well, we can't see behind his left hand, but it looks like the range ruler is sliding all over the place. Mm -hmm. So, well, I guess we'll see. Yep. Okay. Quick, Quick draw, draw getting a range three. Our, that's huge, folks. Quick draw going to get a range three obstructed shot. No, that's Omega Leader. Oh, it is Omega Leader. Okay. So there was no shot there. No, no arc from Quick Draw. And all the dice. And Juke doesn't matter. Whoa. I hear the laughs coming off from over there. That is a lot of natties. It was. That is an obscene amount of natties. Well, that was huge for Perry. There's only five minutes left. I'm going to go tell him that. Thank you, Aaron, for reminding them. Aaron off to remind our players that they have entered the late game. All the marbles now on the table. It's anybody's game, folks. One ship dies, we got a winner. No ships die, we got a final salvo. We do. And what could be more exciting? Final salvos are always fun. I like it when it's an inadvertent final salvo more. Yeah. Not that I'm, you know calling any names out. <laughs> Tristan. But, you know. <laughs> uh, Chris Field says, you guys are both great commentators, great voices, and you know your stuff. Aww. Well, we try. We try. What? Show your love to us through VWTV Live. Indeed. They have a Patreon. They're fantastic. 
Red Hot Awesome X-Wing comment from the cold white north. <laughs> Folks, don't forget as well, this is only the semifinals of season 11. We will have a the final match. epic showdown between Stephen Bowie, boy, boy, and Bowie. Uh, the winner of this match going to be coming to you within the next week or two. Yeah, hopefully. I'm in the charming Caribbean of Mexico next week, so I will not Ooh. be casting, sadly, but I will be watching intently. Awesome. From my cell phone on the Wi-Fi or the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi. Uh, now, interesting fact, uh, we have a rookie off for the top two rookies in the league. That is people who are new to the league, usually in their first season, uh, play a special match. And Perry and Steve Buey played one for the top rookie. Wow. So if Perry wins this game, we get a rookie off mirror they grudge match. They have to do match. it again. Yeah. Amazing. So Perry came out uh, on top in that one. Uh, flying <laughs> Han and AP5. Uh, and he had another ship, forget what it was, versus Defenders. Versus Defenders. Yep. I love how you say that with just the slightest bit of <laughs> decrescendo at the end of your voice. It's been, a defender. Against defenders. Yeah, it's been a <laughs> defender heavy top cut this season. That's okay. Defenders are fun. They are fun. Not. I'm scared of them in 2.0. Just scared. They look epic in 2.0, but so does the E Wake. Yep. Ewing yep. looks equally nasty. There's a lot of stuff the out e there. The Ewing with its built-in long-range scanners. Hey, I got a target lock and a proton torpedo. Hey, I got two tr proton torpedoes. Excellent question from the chat about whether or not a five straight barrel left from Omega Leader could block fan. I'm going to put a hard no on that one there, bud. So we got two straight. He's trying to keep arc for this remaining three minutes, hoping to catch fan, hoping fan is dumb enough to swerve in front of him. We will see. I mean, Fen taking a turn there would get a range one through at a Bree Cloud, but you're never going to hit Omega Leader. And the man, the myth, the legend, TBC, is coming in, but a bit too little too late. We might get one more turn. I mean, all you have to do is make it to the planning phase. You're right. You're so right. Talon Main could barrel roll here and zoom up and try and take shots on Omega Leader the following turn. But unless... Fen manages to gut punch quick draw this turn, Aaron. I think it's fair to say we're probably going to get a final salvo. Final salvo. Uh, so Firene says, pay attention to me. Hey, dude, it's, how you doing? It's Cal Thompson. Don't pay attention to them. <laughs> pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Answer another question on the chat. Yes, there will be Ty D in 2.0 because if there isn't, I'm going to make one. I just love Ty D that much. Three bank from Fen Rao, Woo. going way off to the right-hand side there. Yeah, I think what we're seeing here is Perry going, yeah, sure, final salvo sounds fine to me. Well, if Quick Draw comes in with a one bank, mm -hmm. it'll probably be Concord Dawn active. If he comes in with a anything else, Jade, basically, I think that we're going to get, oh, yep. Quick Draw probably going to have to barrel roll Ooh. into a better spot there. It's a nice shot for Quick Draw. Yeah. Definitely a nice shot for Quick Draw. I don't Could feel like you're going to kill Fen here, though. No, not with his four hull. Not with four hull, no. Especially but if Fen doesn't get a revenge shot. Talon Bane to shoot first. Looks like range two. He dare not shoot a Quick Draw. No, he can't shoot a Quick Draw. He mustn't shoot a Quick Draw. Hmm. Yeah, defenders definitely get shredded by real medalists, but we don't play medalists in Toronto. <laughs> Come on. So uh, nothing hit there. We like scraping the bottom of the jank tank here in Toronto. We do, we do. We we like our whack lists. Doesn't look like Fen's got arc, so Quick Draw gonna take his range one. Target lock and expertise. Uh, and here's Robin the target lock. that one there. Looks like modding for four. No crits. So Fen Rao gonna roll four dice with a focus. No work. Concord title. And takes one, takes last one. maniacally. <laughs> he don't care. No, Fen doesn't care. Unless you're getting a rear arc shot from Nora through a debris cloud and you roll five blanks, Fen Rao doesn't care. <laughs> Did you cast that one for me as well? Don't think so. Don't uh, embarrass me. One of my better moments. Yeah. But my dice. My dice. <laughs> what can I do about my dice? Fen Rao stress. <laughs> Going to be in a tough position to get a shot next turn. I don't think he's going to before the time's over here. 
Uh, they are discussing whether or not they're doing dials. Okay, so we're just going to talk with the judge here and decide whether or not we're going to do judge. Looks like the dials are down. I'm going to go see if they're final saddling or what. Both players just discussing the epic match. Before we get to either the next planning phase or the final salvo, folks, one last shout out uh, again to VTV Live for all the effort they do. We're going to ask Travis to put the link to their Patreon up in the uh, the chat here, and don't forget to tune in within the next two weeks uh, for the PTL Season 11 final. Masa 1996. Yes, they did pick up dials of that sir, but. Yeah, we are going final salvo, folks. These are two players that would rather just have it out right now and dice. So it is going it to be comes. six dice versus four dice. Quick Draw's primary weapon value is two. Yep. It's the title that gives them the third one, so printed value only. We've got six versus four. Um, heavily advantage to parry, but this is a dice game. It is dice. So we're going to have Devin mediating it. We're not going to probably do the dice tray. We're probably going to do it on the mat. I don't know what they're doing up here. They're doing some stuff. Victor's up there, so he's telling him. Okay, we are going to the dice tray. Okay, so somebody's rolling dice here. This is Perry's hands. Perry's going to go first. Perry rolls. All the eyeballs. Two oh. hits. Oh. Wow. Well, that's my kingdom for an eyeball on that one. Yep. Okay, so Robin going to roll his four. Here it he comes. He needs a uh, hit crit or better. Doesn't One crit. Barry moves on. The laws of math crushing both these players in the end, <laughs> folks. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to have Perry Lowe versus Stephen, Stephen Bowie. Bowie in a in rematch. The epic PTL rookie match grudge rematch in a very short order. Salt token has been spent. <laughs> Maximum lols. Maximum Thanks. lols. <laughs> Live again from 401 Games, folks. I'm Timbo Slice. I'm Aaron Pete. And we're going to sign off.